Buongiorno, Rob from Kickback Garage here. Now, today's video is a bit of a request video where quite a few of my subscribers, if you're not subscribing, go and press the, press the old subscription button. Um, they've asked me, how do you really adjust the Lambretta clutch cable? And that's what I'm going to talk about in today's episode. So uh, I'll send the scooter over, grab yourself a coffee, and I'll see you after that. Right, so what I've done prior to the video here is I have completely adjusted the clutch wrongly on this uh, Lambretta Series 1. So I, I thought I'd go through the pointers and tips on uh, how to do that properly and uh, how to get yourself out of a pickle. Or if you've been uh, unlucky and bought a, a Lambretta off a, off a guy that's adjusted it wrongly, then uh, I'll show you how to get out of that too. So firstly, um, I want to look at the engine side of things and uh, I want to show you uh, what, how it's supposed to look like there. So let's go and have a look at that. Right lads, so the first thing you've got to look, now that I've completely uh, and wrongly adjusted this uh, clutch wire, the first thing you have to look at is um, the angle of the clutch arm here in relationship to the wire there. Now uh, this should be a uh, as close as possible, let me just put that out of the way so you can see it, this should be as close as possible to a 90 degree angle. And the funny thing is, the way that I've adjusted it here, even though, uh, I hope you can see this, but even though the adjuster here is wound all the way onto the slackest, it's still quite tight, the clutch. So when I start up this scooter, I started it up for a bit of fun, uh, I uh, rocked it into first gear and the clutch still works, but it works uh, when I let the handle go, the lever, the clutch lever, all the way out uh, to the end of its stroke there. And I couldn't feel any slippage either. Uh, the, fun, the reason for that, I think, is the fact that I've got one of these uh, so-called super clutches. This is the LTH uh, seven plate clutch. and they don't show uh, problems <laughs> quite as easy as like a standard uh, four plate clutch would do. Now, if I had a four plate clutch and took it a couple of uh, couple of laps around the block, I'd probably feel slippage straight away. And another thing I would f uh, notice is that my um, uh, clutch plates would probably worn, be worn out very, very quickly. So uh, I'm gonna, talk you through in how to uh, how to adjust this. But the first thing I've got to do is I take my trusty uh, <laughs> 19 millimeter. This is a 17. Try again, shall I? So I use a 19 millimeter uh, spanner and I open the clutch and release the cable. Now, so first off, I have to adjust the clutch on and I think I'm going to adjust it uh, one spline in so that when I adjust the cable properly uh, it should be at that optimal uh, 90 degree angle. Now the problem is if, you, if it's too slack like it was here now um, or if you've got too much of an acute angle then it'll just give you stiff clutch action uh, and that's not a good thing really. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, take off this spring here, I think we can do that by hand, and I'm going to find my circlip pliers and take off this little circlip here. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but circlips of late, uh, I've had a bad batch of these, and I'm trying to get this off <laughs> with the camera in my face, literally. It's quite hard, so bear with me on this one. Uh, I've actually had a couple. I've actually had a couple that have just deformed. They just haven't been springy enough. So when I've been uh, putting them on or releasing them, then they have been sort of staying in a deformed state. But uh, let's hope that this one doesn't do that because I don't think I've got that many of these left. Oi! Come on, you naughty boy! Oi! That's it, it's been a pen. Why isn't it being why is it being a pen? Oh. 
hurdle. So that didn't deform, so that's a good one. I'll be keeping that one. And I'm just going to move the uh, clutch arm one spline. As you can see, that's, that does uh, interpret quite a big, quite a big angle. So I'm going to put the spring back on there. Come on, you bugger. Spring on. No, I'm not. I'm not going to put the spring on. Ah. I'm going to put the circlet back on. I've just moved it once blind and I'll refit the circlet. Just make make sure that that's seated by, by moving the circlet around and there you go. You can see it's quite loose in there. That's still holding. And I'll fit the clutch arm spring again. Hopefully without pinching my fingers. There you go. So let's have a look at the angle of this now. So there you go. So I reckon if I fit the uh, cable there, then that should give me uh, a closer to a 90 degree angle. Now, uh, as you saw, uh, one spline is uh, make, make quite a lot of difference because it was here. Know what I mean? So the next job in hand, uh, I might have to uh, move the camera a little bit, let's see. So I've moved the camera a little bit and now I'm going to adjust the adjuster here, which is uh, 10 millimeter, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> yes, it is. And I like to uh, wind this on so that it is somewhere around halfway. Now the reason for that is that when I have uh, re, re adjusted the wire trunnion, and by that I mean this thing here, uh, it gives me adjustment both fore and aft because uh, most likely than not uh, when you uh, adjust uh, the clutch wire, it's normally too tight, as is in this case here. So I'll just wind that about around about halfway. So it gives me a bit of uh, adjustability. So on my particular trunnion here, it's a three millimeter uh, hex set screw that sits in there. And if I'm not completely wrong, it's an 8mm flat. So I'm going to open this up. Remember, if you're fitting these for the first time, there's a little disc in there. Now, that disc is supposed to sit on the bottom half of the trunnion here, so that hopefully, when you adjust these, that you don't uh, crimp the wire or fray the wire. Well, that should be released and uh, movable. There you go. I just line this up by hand. I just move move this uh, move this up by hand to round about where I think it should be which is about here. But because I've got the adjuster halfway here, it should give me plenty of uh, fore and aft adjustment after I've put the trunnion back in place. So I'll just hold that there, spin it around a little, and uh, tighten that up again. Snug that down so it doesn't slip. I'm going to try and ease that back on again. So slip it over the back here, in between the arm and the tire. Open up the clutch lever. Oh, I know it's been a pain, isn't it? Open up the clutch lever. Go slide the way through the slot, 
and there you go as you can see now it's more at a 90 degree angle there and that should give me a like a clutch action so the only thing i can do now really is i'll uh, snug down i'll move the camera once again so what i'm going to do now is i'll snug down this uh, adjuster nut then i need two tens like so Snug it down there. Just so it doesn't move anywhere. And basically what I have to do now is uh, fire up the scooter to, to uh, feel the actual clutch working on the uh, clutch handle. So what I have to do now is uh, fire up this beast and I take her off the stand like so. And I, uh, while the engine is running, I'll uh, pull in the clutch and put it into first gear for the first time. Now, when I've put it into first gear, if it just stalls or dies straight away, that means that the clutch is too tight. Um, so what I like to do is uh, adjust the clutch so that the clutch has... Uh, some free play right at the start of the uh, the action of the lever here and I like the clutch to uh, release when I'm about halfway through the travel of the handle. Um, the reason why I like to have it there is that I know that it isn't too tight so it means that when the clutch handle is all the way fully out then I know it's not going to do any um, any slip in and uh, I know the clutch is fully engaged when uh, when it's uh, when the clutch handle is released and also I don't like it if it releases the clutch all the way into the uh, grip either so uh, personally I like it to uh, engage about say three quarters of the way in and fully loosen at uh, the halfway point and then I've got this uh, little bit of free play both uh, when the clutch uh, handle is all the way in and all the way out. So I'm going to take her outside <laughs> and fire her up and I'll see, uh, see where she is. It's pretty windy out here so I'm not going to talk that much but when I fire her up you'll understand that I can't talk anyway because she's quite loud. <laughs> So I rock it, I, I compress the clutch lever, hold the front brake, there you go, she jumped in, and then while she's running, I'll try and lift up my feet to see if, uh, see if she tries to uh, pull. And she doesn't. Now let's see where the bite point is on the uh, handle, on the lever there. I'm about halfway now. There you go. Halfway. Lift up my feet. So what I like to do is, while the engine is running, um, I compress the clutch lever here completely right into the grip. 
and I lift my feet up a little bit gingerly and I give it a little bit of throttle and if the scooter tries to creep when you've got the clutch lever completely uh, compressed then uh, that basically means that the uh, clutch cable is a little bit uh, too slack so then you're gonna have to uh, tighten up the clutch and the opposite of that is if it engages straight away right at the start of the clutch lever um, uh, throw then you should really slacken that cable a little bit because like I said I like to have it sort of in the midpoint there so I'll tighten this a tad a little tad And I, I won't show you how I do that. I, obviously, it's the uh, the little trunnion and the nut. Just going to give that a couple of turns. And I snug down the nut again. One thing I can see while I'm down here now is that I have got a... Uh, a very very close to 90 degree angle on the uh, clutch arm that's on the engine case here and on the uh, wire there so that's why I've got such a nice light clutch even though this is as you know a LTH7 plate clutch so I'll give that another go just to make sure that I'm uh, I'm in the right ballpark <laughs> So I put the clutch, pull the clutch lever, rock it into gear, there we go, lift up my feet, give it a rev, it's not going anywhere so that's good, and I'll see where the bite point is on the clutch lever now, halfway, so it starts creeping at about halfway. <laughs> She's feisty. Put it in neutral, Rob. Right, well, that's job done. Right, people, so I hope this video made sense for you. So what the, just to sort of summarize here, I really, uh, personally, I like the clutch to engage at about the halfway point in the lever. And that means that um, you know it's freed up by the time you've got it down into the uh, grip there. And you also know that when it's completely released, that it's not going to slip. And uh, you, you'll feel that straight away if uh, the first time you start it up and uh, pull in the handle. And if it creeps, then the wire is a little bit too slack. So uh, I hope you found this useful. Uh, I know I can jabber on a little bit, but um, if you enjoyed these videos, don't forget to do the old subscribe. And uh, if you want to support the channel, go over to, uh, I've got some Teespring links all over the place, both on Facebook and at the top of the page here on uh, YouTube. And uh, go grab yourself a t-shirt and uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right, see you later.